SNAP is turning 10 this year, which, wow, first off. And second, it got me thinking. Why don't I give you 10 minutes of useless information about FNAF on this fine day? Okay, I say 10, but I haven't finished editing it yet, so I think it's like... It'll be, it'll be like 9 or 10 minutes. I don't have much to say in terms of intro. They aren't going to be in any specific order in case you were prepared for a talking points level presentation. There's one reason that I'm the best. I'm going to tell you guys. It's because I'm black. <laughs> so, uh, roll the tape. Roll the clip. Jamie, uh, Jamie, pull up the, uh, pull up the... Certain parts of the games, especially FNAF 6, lock your mouse down during gameplay when the mouse isn't being used. Usually L tapping doesn't work. However, hitting shift tab or whatever keybind you have to open up the Steam overlay will unlock your mouse and let you use it again. This is especially helpful when doing a later glitch in FNAF 6. In Sister Locations Custom Night, you can slightly see your office through the edges of your monitor. This makes it very obvious to tell if either Yendo or Bonette are going to be in the office next camera flip, as you can just see them. Bonette is especially noticeable as she's animated even when she isn't moving. In the first trailer for FNAF 1, Freddy's hand is broken. This is because his suit on the outside is able to move, while the metal endoskeleton part of his hand wasn't weight painted properly so it doesn't move with the bone. Ennard's right eyebrow has consistently been pretty inconsistent on whether it actually wants to be there or not. In Sister Location, he, like half the time, has both eyebrows. His mask in the control module, appearances in the office, and jump scare all have both eyebrows. But other parts of the game just don't seem to get the memo. In the scooping room, fake ending cutscene, and extras menu, the eyebrow seems to have fallen off somewhere. It's not just in Sister Location either. The first teaser for Ultimate Custom Night is also missing the eyebrow before it was fixed in the next teaser. After this, his models in Help Wanted and Help Wanted 2 would basically solidify him having no eyebrow as canon. Speaking of small character model errors, Nightmare Bonnie's left eye is considerably off-centered compared to his right eye, leaving a lot of empty space. Another thing I noticed is that his eyes are fixed and help wanted, but are orange instead of purple. Honestly, a bit of a downgrade. I really like how the purple looks on him. This might not be a character design error, rather just a design change, but Mangle is missing her endoskeleton teeth that she has in FNAF 2. It's a weird change because I feel like that's kind of an iconic part of her design, but I also didn't even notice it was missing for the longest time, so... While salvaging animatronics, there's certain noises specific to each animatronic that will play when they get agitated. Here's what each one sounds like. They play extremely quietly in games, so make sure to use that taser if you hear one. FNAF 3 has multiple codes that you can type into the wall keypad to start the Fredbear minigame. There's the main one, 395248, that everyone knows, but you can also type in 19922481795523 to get the same result. Multiple of the early FNAF games have debug codes that you can type into your keyboard that will instantly skip the night. For FNAF 1, you hit C, D, and plus on your numpad. FNAF 2 is the same, except for that you have to be hovering over Toy Freddy's nose on the Celebrate poster. FNAF 3, as far as I can tell, doesn't have any secret skip night codes, which is weird because it's the only one I actually want to skip. FNAF 4's debug codes are a little more complicated. You activate them by holding C during the warning screen, which will give you access to two different codes. Hitting S, C, and 4 during a night will set the hour to 4am, and hitting S, C, and 6 will set the hour to 6am. The first code is probably there to test the 4am switches with Fredbear and Nightmare. Sister Location apparently has a mute button which works as a pseudo-skip button, as muting whatever voice line it is playing instantly skips it. Welcome back for another night of inter- The key button to do it is Control S, but make sure to hit it again because it toggles it on and off. FNAF 6 has the same Control S skip button that Sister Location has, but it isn't as useful in this game. It's fine if you want to skip the intro cutscene, but for something outside of that, it's better to just click the little skip button in the top right. Hidden in the files of FNAF World is a texture for the box at the end of FNAF 4 being opened. There isn't any code that relates to this texture as far as I know, so nobody knows what would have been done with it. Dreadbear had a different name for him while being developed. He's referred to in the Help Wanted files as Frankenfreddy. The name of the DLC was different as well, being called Rise of Frankenfreddy instead of Curse of Dreadbear. Speaking of early Help Wanted content, Nightmare Fredbear's color palette used to be the same as Nightmare Freddy's. In the small snippet shown after the first Help Wanted teaser, you can see a brown colored Fredbear. The name of his textures also still refer to Fredbear as Nightmare Freddy. I might be wrong about the specifics of this, but Click Team seems to have a limit on how fast you can click. You can hear the gap by honking Freddy's nose. This speed limit, however, can be completely avoided by just moving your mouse at all. Even moving just a pixel will reset the timing. Here's an example of what it sounds like before and after moving your mouse. There's a glitch in FNAF 6 that lets you get an absurd amount of money. First, you'll need to buy an item that gives you bonus revenue. The Balloon Bear works perfectly well for this, as it's cheap and can be bought right at the beginning of the game. When you get back into blueprint mode, you have to click into the catalog and place the barrel as it's fading to black. 
Doing this quick enough will place the barrel without changing any of the stats. Now you can remove it, and it will remove the stats of the barrel that never ended up getting added, pushing the bonus revenue into the negative. This causes some like energy roundup shit and will give you tens of thousands of dollars at the end of the first night. I think the worst part about this is that you can't even tab out. If only there was a way to unlock your mouse. FNAF 2 has a glitch that allows you to look at two cameras at once. By clicking on a different camera to the one that you're on, and flicking the camera down extremely fast, it will register the camera you clicked as being active. This lets you listen for Mangle's sound while watching the music box, which isn't very useful, or do something actually useful, watch parts of service. Most of the animatronics are able to be stalled by using the light on them in the cameras. However, the main three withered animatronics don't actually work like that. You only need to keep the camera on them. By having the camera on both Cam 12 and Cam 8, it effectively eliminates Freddy, Bonnie, and Chica for the rest of the night. It's hard to notice, but Toy Bonnie actually has a tail in FNAF 2. It's just a large white ball the size of a small white ball to be like a rabbit tail. This also carries over to Shadow Bonnie as well. Mangle also seems to have a tail like this, as you can see in multiple renders and help one its Mangle model. JJ has gone through a slight redesign change in every adding she shows up in. In FNAF 2, her cheeks and propeller are pink. The colors of both of them then change to purple in FNAF World, then blue by the time we reach Ultimate Custom Night. During the third anniversary of FNAF, Scott uploaded these screenshots to his website, Scott Games. These come shortly after his cancellation of his next game, which would have been FNAF 6. Obviously, with hindsight, FNAF 6 was never cancelled, and he was hinting at it with these screenshots. In the screenshots for Springtrap, Funtime Freddy, and Baby, you can see these little snippets of what would eventually become their FNAF 6 forms. The corner of Springtrap's image has the thin, bony hand of Scraptrap, Funtime Freddy's has Molten Freddy's tentacle eye riddle body, and Baby's has Scrap Baby's ponytail. These would be teased four months before Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria Simulator would come out. Early looks at the teasers for Ultimate Custom Night show what would have been a very different roster to the final game. In the first teaser, Endo-01 specifically from FNAF World was in, and the Freddles were separated from Nightmare Freddy. Nightmare Fredbear is there without Nightmare, and Baby's hair is colored incorrectly along with Ennard's missing eyebrow from before. The next teaser shows Trash and the Gang as three separate characters, as well as Candy Cadet. Only a few mediocre melodies were added, missing Nedbear and Orville, and Baby's hair and Ennard's eyebrow were fixed. Skipping a few teasers, these four animatronics on the bottom were added, and Candy Cadet and Endo-01 were removed. And also, uh, the custom night text on the top got bigger. Going ahead a bit more, those empty slots ended up being filled with Withered Bonnie and Withered Chica. Freddles and Nightmare Freddy were collapsed into one spot giving room for Nightmare, and Trash and the gang were combined giving room for Nightmare Own and Molten Freddy. The last teaser before the final roster added another column, as well as adding Phantom Freddy and Phantom Mangle, Nightmare Balloon Boy, and Helpy. The final roster would end up adding a few more slots, adding the rest of the mediocre melodies, Phantom BB, Nightmare Bonnie, Funtime Foxy, and Old Man Consequences. If you watched one of the FNAF Game Theory videos, you might know that Ultimate Custom Night and FNAF World are connected. Setting Old Man Consequences to 1 in UCN and beating his minigame will send you to the Red Lake from FNAF World. As you can in FNAF World, you can walk up to the top of the lake and begin to drown yourself. The game will crash once you hit the bottom, but that's not all it does. As if you were to open up a fresh copy of FNAF World with no playtime, you would notice that a trophy has appeared on the file select screen. This is the exact same trophy you would get for going down 4 layers deep into the lake in FNAF World, done in Ultimate Custom Night instead. That's, uh, pretty cool. In the FNAF 3 minigames, moving to other rooms has a one-frame delay, where your character stays in the doorway and the room changes to a four-way room before changing to the next room. Also, the mice move at 60 FPS while your character and Shadow Freddy move in little steps. Alright, quick lightning round, let's just get through these. The animation that plays when Springtrap runs across the room in FNAF 3 doesn't cut off at his waist, it shows that his legs are stiff the entire time. In Ultimate Custom Night, there's a rare chance for enemies from FNAF World to randomly spawn in your office. The little Freddy that shows up when using the Mimic Ball has his own loading screen and calls him Virtual Freddy. In the first gameplay teaser for Help Wanted 2, Freddy's nose disappears when honking it in the parts of the service minigame. In his location, there's a chance that Ennard's mask can get replaced by Lulbit's head in the control module. In FNAF 4, staring at the bed for too long will get you jump scared by Nightmare Foxy, even if he's not active. The FNAF games take place in Utah. This comes from the location that the original trilogy of books takes place in, as well as the lawsuits from FNAF 6. Alright, lightning round over. Actually, one more thing. Fortnite. You know that weird-ass Freddy torture device with saws and shit from the movie? Officially, it's called Torture Freddy, but that name doesn't really have a great ring to it, you know? I think one of the puppeteers on the movie agreed, as I suggested a different name for it on Twitter. Shreddy Fazchair. <laughs>